Dr. Aaron Cato. I'm an extension specialist and I work in horticulture IPM at the University of Arkansas System Division of Agriculture. Uh, strawberry season's coming up on us and I wanted to put out an update on how to prevent strawberry fruit rot. Um, so really what we're going to talk about is how to use foliar fungicides to prevent a lot of the disease that many people see throughout the fruiting season. And we're going to give some updates regarding 2023. So what are the two major diseases that we deal with in strawberry? The first one is Botrytis fruit rot. I would say this is what many people re has, have historically recognized as the biggest issue. And then next we have anthracnose fruit rot, which is probably what is the big emerging disease and what most people have had the most trouble with, especially in 2022, where we had a lot of hot, heavy rains. And so I mentioned that because, you know, the biology of, of the uh, disease, funguses that cause these diseases mean a lot for how you should manage them. So Botrytis, it thrives in moist, damp, or warm environments, which is what we would uh, characterize our spring as, especially when we start actually having strawberries wake up and put on flowers. Botrytis is going to be there the whole time, whereas anthracnose really needs to be a bit more wet and a bit more warm. So we really typically see anthracnose uh, begin to be a big issue around 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Botrytis can be easily moved by just the wind alone, although it will move in other ways too, and that's why you'll see it even in high tunnels, whereas anthracnose needs this heavy, uh, these heavy winds during a rain events to really move moved around. Now, that's not to say that you can't move it around yourself by maybe contacting a plant that has uh, dew all over the leaves and knocking the water droplets around, but our field-wide movement is mostly going to be from these heavy rains. Botrytis typically infects the flowers, and then often the, uh, that gray mold you see will uh, present on the fruit, but the pathogens themselves are actually mostly just infecting the flowers, and that's where we see a lot of our yield loss from. Um, it doesn't affect non-damaged fruit, green or red, but if a fruit gets damaged, say from hail or a bird peck or sets in water and gets kind of waterlogged, it can infect those uh, those fruit, or if it's setting against another fruit that is infected, like you see the one there on the uh, top left. Um, but if not, it can infect them. So we really need to protect the flowers for Botrytis to uh, prevent it. Whereas with anthracnose, it can infect the flowers as well. So we do need to uh, protect the flowers from anthracnose, specifically when we do get the warmer times during flowering, uh, but also can infect green or red fruit. So if you see those lesions on the berry there on the top right, those were probably uh, occurred from water sitting on uh, a green or red fruit uh, and then actually spreading out from there. And so we actually need to protect from anthracnose throughout the entire time uh, in the spring. So I'm now going to talk about a, a fungicide spray schedule. I want to say that I'm pulling a lot of this information from the 2023 Southeast Regional Strawberry Integrated Pest Management Guide. Um, it should be out by the time this video gets out. Um, you'll see here a list of products that we're going to uh, include in our potential schedule that you could use. So you can see the products there on the very left side. Then we have our FRAC group, which is just how the fungicide is able to prevent uh, these pathogens from infecting plants. You can see we, we give a number to that because they're distinctly different in these different groups. And if it's within a, within a different number, it means it, it does it in a different way. And so resistance to group seven should not confer to a group nine. But say you use Fontellus and it's resistant to Kenya, which I don't think it is, but that would be an example of where if what's resistant to one is probably resistant to both. You then see gray mold, which would be botrytis fruit rot or BFR, and then anthracnose fruit rot or AFR. Um, and so a letter next to each of these, just how effective these products are at preventing these diseases. So the lowest would be not effective, then fair, which would be F, then good, which would be G, and then excellent, which would be E. In general, if it's good, we think it's going to do a pretty good job, right? Now on the left, let's talk a little bit more about um, setting up your schedule. The first thing I'll say is that um, in years like 2023, which is when we're putting out this video, when we're getting a lot of early warm weather, what we'll see is a lot of blooms that pop out, and then we'll get a freeze, and it'll kill the blooms. We'll see dead petioles, things like that. And what's happening is we're getting some botrytis on plants, and it could lead to botrytis crown rot. So what we recommend in a year especially like this um, is to consider a pre-bloom application. When we say pre-bloom, there are blooms out there. But when we say pre-bloom, we mean before you hope to take any of these blooms on to the next year or onto the uh, to being harvested. So what we recommend is a, a spray of Captan or Thyram plus the addition of a product called Roverol. 
Uh, Roverall is pretty good against gray mold, and you can't integrate it anywhere else in your schedule because you can't spray it on blooms you hope to harvest. And so there are some limitations, but early on before we get to true bloom, that's a good thing to throw in there and a good way to limit some damage to plants and potential extra botrytis later in the year. Preventative sprays during bloom, bloom are critical. Um, this is when we be, uh, recommend to begin our spray schedule right at around 5% of your plants uh, starting to bloom or about 5% of the, uh, the bloom you'll, you're hoping to get. And then you need to spray at least every seven days. Products should be effective for both botrytis fruit rot and anthracnose fruit rot. So we, we talked about how both will infect flowers, although the biggest risk for botrytis, or is for botrytis early on, you still need to at least have a good rating uh, for your product combination you're putting out for anthracnose. So what we say is consider tank mixing applications with CAP-10, especially anything with poor anthracnose fruit rot uh, efficacy. And what you'll see, hear me talk about later is, especially if you're in a high disease situation. If you lost a lot of fruit last year to anthracnose or botrytis, just realize that adding CAP-10 in with something else that you're spraying, which is also um, deemed excellent or good, is going to save you a ton of money this year. Now, not every year is a bad disease year. It doesn't happen every single year, but every time you have one and you have a good schedule out that prevents a lot of loss, you'll make up every bit of money and you're going to help your economic sustainability. And lastly, rotate your effective modes of action. You don't want to apply the same mode of action two weeks in a, low, a row unless it's CAP-10 or Thyrealm. Captain and Thyrem are, have multiple modes of action, which means the risk of resistance for them is very, very low. These are old fungicides, and we still don't have resistance to them, so don't worry about those. But all these specific site fungicides you see below that in that list, below the Captain Thyrem that don't have the M in front of it, you don't want to spray these two weeks in a row. Because if it didn't work the first week, it's definitely not going to work the second week, and you're going to lose a lot of money. And also, you can promote the uh, promote resistance that we see if you continually spray the same thing over and over. All right, so now we're going to go through the examples of follow your spray schedule. Uh, what I'll first say is these are all just suggestions. You make sure you need to read the label before you uh, even buy these products, but especially when you buy them before you apply them. And the next thing I want to say is that I work out of Arkansas. I try to think about their surrounding states, and I do help people from surrounding states when they contact me. But uh, these were all labels that I looked up that were specifically used in Arkansas, but they're typically uh, the uh, national label. But I would just look into that if I was you, if you were in Missouri or Kansas or Oklahoma or something like that. So on the right, you can see I have a list of products. I have the rate. This is generally the max rate that I'm listing, which is generally what you should consider applying. And then how many times you can use that based on the max use limits for each of those products and using the max rate. Something like CAP-10, that's where people generally try to stretch the 9 to 10 applications. We'll talk about different rates for that um, uh, here in the next couple slides. Other thing I wanted to add is that I put CAP-10 4L here in here this year instead of the, the solid formulations because it looks like probably uh, the liquid formulations are going to be the ones more sold in the future. But that, that may change as, as we know. Everything changes every year. All right, so first I'm going to list out kind of the first three sprays. Remember what we said, right? Botrytis is our big worry early on. We still need to consider anthracnose, but botrytis is really where we want to uh, make our main focus early. And so products like Elevate and Kenya only really um, control botrytis and don't do much for anthracnose. So one of those products plus CAP-10 is a good option early on where we're not dealing with too much anthracnose and mainly just botrytis. So we might as well use those those products that we can't use too much later, or we don't really want to rely on much later early on. So you can see you can do something like Captain Elevate or Switch Captain or Kenya Plus Captain. And I'll say Switch Captain, it's got pretty good anthracnose. And so you can use it even a little later, but it's still something you probably want to prioritize earlier on. So I would say try to use some type of rotation of these three product combinations to start out. And I think we usually start out with the Captain Elevate when we, uh, every time we do our, uh, our spray schedules on our different uh, research trials. And so you can see here, this next slide now is showing you where I chose Captain Elevate, then Switch Captain, and then Captain Elevate for our first three. And so you can see that it's a rotation between 17, 12 plus nine, and then the 17, all while still having that Captain, which is multiple sites at uh, the same time there with it. Now for spray four, this is where you're starting to get very close to where you're going to be actually picking fruit. Um, I think this is a good time to get a systemic out there like Luna Sensation that's really good against anthracnose and really good against botrytis. Um, this is one where you don't have to um, uh, 
mix it with cap tan, but you you definitely could, especially if you're in a high pressure situation. But you know, you'll start getting some, some constraints on use rates on cap tan if you mix every single one. The other thing I wanted to add is you can use something like Pristine, Maravon, or Miravis Prime here. Generally, we use Luna Sensation, Maravon, or Miravis Prime instead of Pristine because they do have better uh, botrytis um, efficacy or better efficacy overall for strawberries. Um, one thing you'll note is that Maravon and Maravis Prime just typically are a little bit more pricey, but you know, some people like them a little more, is what I would say. You can see also that they're slightly different FRAC groups. They're using that 12 group instead of 11, like Luna Sensation is. You can see here we chose that Luna Sensation on group four. Um, and then we have Spray 5, got back in our last Captain Elevate that we're going to use, and then also a Switch Captain. So we had a good systemic for Anthracnose on Spray 4, and then we still kept up a good or a good plus another good product with Switch Plus Captain there. Um, it's only okay versus uh, Thracnose, so, you know, I wouldn't fault you if you started not, not using Switch by Spray 6, but we kept it in because we honestly didn't want to buy that many products to put in. So you can see here, Spray 7, Luna Sensation plus Captain. Spray 8, Switch plus Captain. Spray 9, Luna Sensation plus Captain. I think if you're used to Switch as a rotationary tool for Luna Sensation especially, I think it's a really good uh, uh, reason to put it towards the back end with Captain added. So you can see that our last four sprays were Switch or Luna Sensation rotated with Captain. I think that's still going to be really good options for both Botrytis and uh, Anthracnose. Typically, when you get to your last three sprays, you're mostly protecting against anthracnose. And you can see our last three sprays are Luna Sensation and Cap 10 and then Switch as a rotationary tool. So I think that's still, you know, making the or going to make a lot of uh, money and prevention of, of anthracnose, even though Switch isn't the best anthracnose product. It still is good. And you're adding Cap 10 in. Another thing I'll add is just, you know, adding in Cap 10 with most things is going to get you a long way. Um, you're going to have to reduce the rate. If you're going to do that down to like, you know, more like uh, 2.4 quarts per acre, if you're going to go to two, and I think it's around about 2.6 quarts per acre, if you're going to, uh, if you want to do like nine applications. So if you're, if you're going to put out one in the fall, which a lot of people do uh, for different diseases, then that'll leave you nine for this year. If you, if you do the 2.4 quarts per acre and something more like 2.6, will get you um, eight for, you know, this year, which is what we have here. And then one for the fall. So if you're looking for any more information, here's the Southeastern Regional Guide again. Here's our blog that we see here in the middle where we put out a lot of inf information related to stuff occurring in and around Arkansas. And also the Southern Fruitcast, which I run with Dr. Amanda McWirt, which is about the Southeast and not specific to Arkansas. And you can find a lot of information about strawberries there. Thank you. <music>